Uh, we have uh, two experts. Uh, we have two experts here uh, with us today. We have uh, Noam, Noam Levine uh, with us from um, MathWorks, and uh, he's been uh, uh, he's, he's been integral uh, working with us, with Intel and uh, MathWorks, and uh, to help uh, DSP Builder uh, become the tool that it is today. And uh, holds a master's degree from Northeastern University, a bachelor's degree from Boston University. So a uh, big thank you and uh, welcome to know. And our other expert, uh, Dr. McKay, uh, manager here at Intel. He has a long history working with uh, high-level synthesis type uh, type languages or type, um, type flows. Uh, all the way back from uh, Clipto and Auto ESL, Selexica. Uh, he is uh, very involved with the uh, Intel One API flow that, uh, that we have going on currently. Um, keenly interested in quality of results when it comes to producing RTL out of, uh, uh, out of these tools. Uh, and uh, we'd like to uh, welcome Duncan, uh, graduate from uh, West Scotland with a master's degree in electrical and electronic engineering. And then me, uh, my name is Stephen Elzinga. I'll be your moderator. Uh, I've been with Intel for uh, about six years now um, uh, uh, on the trading team, uh, conducting tradings, uh, uh, improving our trading content. Uh, that's me. So uh, as I mentioned a little bit before, before the recording started, there'll be a couple of ways that you can ask your questions if you like to. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, type your question in the chat window, or you can go ahead and unmute yourself and uh, ask the question through audio. Uh, feel free to ask uh, any questions you know, related to uh, DSP Builder. So ground rules. So any questions you can think about DSP Builder is fair game. So uh, again, either uh, through audio or over the chat is, is fantastic. Uh, if the question ends up getting a little bit too specific or too detailed, uh, we might defer and deflect to jot the question down and um, referring to uh, NFE. It's, it's not that we're not capable of answering, it's just if it gets a little bit too involved, uh, it might take, a, take a attention away a little bit from, uh, from what we have to talk about with DSP Builder. Um, all right, let's see here. And then with that, I'll go ahead and turn some time over to Duncan. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Steve. So welcome everyone. Welcome to this Ask the Expert session on DSP Builder. Um, so as you can see from the slide, everyone, you know, DSP Builder allows users of the MathWorks tools, uh, such as MATLAB and Simulink, to implement their design in silicon with Intel FPGAs. <clears throat> you know, it enables users from the Simulink model-based design environment <clears throat> to not only implement on an FPGA, but also implement with very high performance silicon. Okay. The FPGA IP that's generated by DSP Builder is designed by Intel FPGA experts and is easily some of the most optimal and highest performing IP you will find in any Intel FPGA. Okay. But before I get into the benefits of DSP Builder, you know, as you can clearly see from this slide, uh, you know, DSP Builder is built on top of the MathWorks tools and development environment. And so the first thing I'd like to do today is to ask Norm Levine from the MathWorks to tell you about the MathWorks tools and their design environment. And then when Norm's finished, I'll come back and uh, discuss uh, some of the benefits of DSP Builder. And so with that, Norm, uh, Steve, I would say next slide. And Norm, would you like to take it away? Sure, thanks. Uh, thanks, Duncan. So um, yeah, my, my name is uh, Norm Levine from MathWorks. And what I want to talk about, you can go to the next slide, um, is, um, is we're going we're gonna to look at sort of what model-based design is and um, otherwise, you know, some people refer to it as test-based development as well. And then we'll look at uh, some workflow examples um, uh, just to, to show how this all fits in a, in a customer um, environment. Next slide, please. Uh, go next, who MathWorks is. So just a quick uh, update on, math, on who MathWorks is. So MathWorks, we're, we make products for scientists and engineers. Our, our core based product is something called MATLAB, which is a programming environment for uh, algorithmic development, data analysis, visualization, numeric computation. Next, let's build on this. Um, our other platform product is Simulink, which is our platform for what we call model based design. And this is also what DSP Builder is built on. And this is a graphical environment for design simulation and test. Uh, next. And on top of those two platform products, we have over 100 add-on products for specialized task and vertical market applications. And we'll look at an, an example of that uh, a little later on. Next. Um, so what we're really talking about here is when we talk about 
model based design um, with MATLAB and Simulink, what we're really looking at is a process that our customers go through in order to get their projects to market as quickly as possible with the highest degree of, uh, of success. And it starts uh, at the top of the circle here with uh, with your research, where you're really looking at, you know, what are my system specifications? What are the re requirements of the system? And these are this stage is really not necessarily going to be done by, um, you know, the, I would say the hardcore end user of FPGAs and SOCs. This is a systems designer, a systems engineer, someone or an architecture uh, designer. So this is somebody who's looking at the overall system performance. And this is really where, you know, being associated with with MATLAB and Simulink helps because those are the people we talk to a lot is those systems engineers, the systems designers. And what they're looking at at the beginning is they're, they're, they're looking at an end to end um, specification for their system. And more importantly, they're looking at how are they going to validate that end to end system specification? And that is. Uh, you know, so people are starting to look at how they're going to test and validate and verify their systems as they're starting to put their system architecture together. Then at that after that research phase, they're going to start to build simulation models, and this is often done in Simulink. Um, and again, test those models against the um, the the requirements that you've developed in the first stage. If there's something wrong, you fix it in the model. Um, and this goes through this process through implementation, integration, deployment. And the reason it's a circle here is because this is an iterative process. You're going to go through each step in this process, you know, reducing your levels of abstraction. You start very high, you know, when you're looking at your research phase, very high level of abstraction. And as you start to get through, and you can uh, hit the next, there's a box that I'm drawn. Thanks. As you get into the integration deployment pieces, which we're going to talk more about later, that's where you're really starting to reduce those levels of abstraction and get down into the specific silicon. But as you go through this process, you want to maintain or make sure that the test you know, requirements that you develop during your research phase, you still have to meet those same requirements as you get to integration and, and deployment. And that's really where this model based design uh, framework comes in handy and, and really helps our customers, um, you know, save three to 12 months of development efforts. We've seen, you know, use cases uh, from our customers because they've simulated up front, they've validated model, um, model behavior up front. They've made sure their test cases are working up front. By the time they get to deployment um, uh, of their systems in hardware, they've got a very high degree of confidence that what they've built is going to work. Uh, next. And this, we can look at this in a little more detail on, and when we look at the code generation from model based design, again, you start with your research requirements. You go through your system architecture, your algorithm uh, design phase, and into your implementation models. Next, build here. And this is where DSP Builder comes in, right? So you've built this Simulink model, and DSP Builder can be that bridge between your, your implementation model. So this is going to be a, a model of your algorithm in fixed point that you can now deploy onto your hardware. Next. And coupled with that, we've got tools that allow you to um, verify that that generated HDL that you've got matches your system requirements and matches, you know, it, and your system is behaving the way you expect it to. Uh, and hit next to build. And um, and it, it, on top of that, so the DSP builder is great. It takes care of what's running on your digital hardware. We know a lot of customers are using SOCs that also have embedded ARM cores. We have tools as well that can go from your system architecture and model to generate C code to run on that ARM processor that's in your SOC. So we can take care of both sides of, of that uh, system design issue that a lot of the customers have. Next. And on top of that, we have additional tools, um, you know, that can either do higher levels of 
uh, system modeling of your SSC architecture. We've got some application, uh, some application specific toolboxes for things like wireless vision, deep learning, and and DSP functions that'll provide you with you know synthesizable RTL and and example reference applications. So again, from that Simulink environment, there's a whole host of things you can do uh, to help your customers get to an optimal solution as quickly as possible. Next. And I wanted to go through uh, an example of, of a workflow. Um, next. Um, so this is what we call antenna algorithm design. So, you know, we talk a lot and, and you know, you guys are all here because you're interested in what's running on that FPGA or SOC, but Part of the value of having a model based design approach with Simulink is that, you know, we're not limited to just looking at that box that is the SSC or FPGA. And within that Simulink environment, we've got a common design language that stretches all the way from, um, you know, in the case of a comm system like this, all the way from the algorithm you're running on your SOC out through the antennas and through the channel that you know um, you may be uh, broadcasting or receiving over. So when a customer is looking at this model-based design approach, they're not looking at just that algorithm that's running on the FPGA or SOC. They're looking at that algorithm in the context of an entire system simulation. So if you go to the next slide. And you can hit um, hit it a couple times. There's uh, there's a several builds here, and I'll just explain the whole thing. Um, so what we talk about in in this, uh, uh, I think two more um, in this system is you know we can start and uh, we've got maybe one more. Like if you, there we go. Good. Um, so. In this same tools environment, which is great for your customers, they only have to live in one tools environment. We start with, you know, waveform generation and whether that's custom waveforms, anything you can describe mathematically, you can generate in MATLAB, or if you're or if your customers are using standards-based waveforms or 5G LTE, satellite communications, whatever, we've got tools that generate that. You can simulate the alg the transmit algorithms that they're going to um, have resident on their FPGA or SOC, simulate um, RF front ends. Uh, so we've got behavioral models of, of you know, RF front ends, simulate what your antenna patterns are going to look like, simulate your, your, your channel, and then you can do the same thing on the receive side uh, through analysis. So what this allows customers to do is it allows them to get a real top level view of their entire system. And see what they might need to do in their algorithm um, to account for what's going on in the rest of their system. And they can do this in one common tools environment. And, and the beauty of that is, you know, this is a lot of, uh, this is a lot of different disciplines we've got described here from RF design to, you know, HDL to antenna design, whatever. So likely this is not one engineer that's doing all of these things. It's groups of engineers or different teams of engineers, but because they can all work in a common tools environment, that being MATLAB and Simulink, to do this entire end-to-end -end solution, it really helps on the customer end um, that they can get these designs done quickly. So when it comes to implementation, yeah, that's just the one piece of this whole chain, but you know, they're already going to have a good idea that what they're going to be implementing in that in that FPGA or SOC is going to work in the rest of the system. Next slide. And and the wireless. Uh, so this is a this is a um, a user story. Um, this is on on the MapWorks website and a company called uh, Capgemini that did uh, an ORAN design uh, for 5G on ARIA 10 using MATLAB Simulink and a bunch of our uh, vertical market products. Um, for wireless, um, and so uh, you can go you can go take a look at that if you like. But that's just some you know user proof on that model based design approach. Uh, next slide. And you know the wireless, you know wireless is sort of an easy example. We do a ton of that, uh, but it's one of many. 
that we have available. Um, so whatever your customer is doing, whether it's like in wireless control systems, robotics, automotive design, you know, for ADAS or, or infotainment or drivetrain or body electronics, aerospace systems, test and measurement. Um, there are similar workflows um, available from MATLAB uh, in MATLAB and Simulink uh, from MathWorks that will allow those customers to do that same full up uh, model based design, you know, test driven development. Back to you, Duncan. Hey, thanks, Noel. Uh, next slide, please. So the first thing I'd like to do, everyone, uh, well, first of all, thanks, Norm, for that great introduction and all of you. Um, so the first thing I'd like to do today, everyone, is explain why DSP Builder exists. Um, so we have this productive development and verification environment, which Norm just talked about. Now, if you wanted to implement this in silicon, as shown here, it's like throwing it over a wall. Um, it's a separate development environment to create an FPGA. It requires people with different skill sets. The RTL would have to be written from scratch, uh, and that introduces errors. And then remember, Simulink is a verification environment, and you've now just lost all that verification that's been performed inside the MathWorks tools. Um, and that is a major loss you know, to any, any, any design. You know. So DSP Builder knocks down this wall and with, and with some benefits. Uh, next slide, please. 